Welcome back to Travolta, recapping the A-List era. Enjoy the episode. Fourteen years I waited. Twelve, fourteen years of it. In Azkaban. <laughs> That's right, folks. After a crisp fourteen years, we've come to it at last. The end of John Travolta's A-list era. The way you say it like that. Yeah. I I want to like treat this like not like a sad. That, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, the opposite. I want to treat this like um, not like sad that it's over but a happy that it happened. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? Like when you're at a funeral and they're like, celebrate you know, the life. It sucks that grandpa died, but we're happy that we had a life with him. Celebrating so the life. Yes. You know, it's not mourning the loss. It's celebrating the life. And I think that's what we're going to do here on the say list era is we're celebrating the a list era that happened. Um, and we'll definitely talk about, mm-hmm. you know, our grievances that are yeah. to come of, of course, but yeah, dude, another, yeah, 20 we the first era was 20 episodes and now this is episode 55 yeah so there's another 25 episodes yeah 55 the more episodes. i think about it the more i'm increasingly kind of convinced that maybe we should have done this two episodes from now but i'm sticking to my guns what oh so keep I've taking in, a pelham and... i've in, i've increasingly thought old dogs is actually the ending of the a-list era but we've already committed <laughs> we've already <laughs> we've already <laughs> potentially recorded episodes saying the beginning of the new era <laughs> uh going out so well let's talk about it why okay. do you think that so for the longest time we've been holding up that you know bolt from that the a-list era was pulp fiction to bolt it was his resurgence with pulp fiction after you know a series of flukes and it kind of goes into until Bolt, and Bolt's the last time he kind of has like an A list marquee movie. Mm-hmm. And I really stuck with that. Yeah. And then I was like, taking a Pelham and Old Dog's kind of like he's taking a Pelham's kind of like an A list. More Denzel. It's kind. It's it, like that. That was my rationale. Yeah. Was like it's the Denzel showcase, and Trolls are just there. He's the heavy. Yeah, and that kind of role that he's playing in that is what cues him up for the next 20 years of his career. Yeah, I agree with that Up through, like, Paradise City nowadays. But... And so that was my rationale for making Take No Fell in the beginning. Yeah. Um, The counterpoint is that I kind of feel like Old Dogs being the movie that cuts off his contract with Disney Hmm. makes sense as the end of his A-list era. It's more of a logistical He's so non-marketable that Disney, like, cancels him. (laughs) So it's more of a logistical logical end yeah. rather than a emotional end yeah and that would make from paris with love the beginning of like the travolta exploitation era which is what we're calling the next era um however like i said yeah. we have already committed we to have this. committed, <laughs> we've to committed it. that we are making bolt the ending and so i'm just explaining my rationale to try and make myself feel better i don't, I don't think we're missing out on a lot no i think we're fine i think we're fine taking a film i think with the, like the initial rationale the second build it's the denzel movie Travolta's is the heavy yeah and that's kind of where he falls like where he falls into his next 10 years of his career playing heavies and like direct yeah. video movies well and we we've 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 talked about this before where if you want to get technical about it travolta really has a five act career yes because battlefield earth up until be cool right? yes yeah up f- battlefield earth until be cool was what i would call the icarus rebound era yeah so let's talk about let's 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 go through this chronologically, man. You want to start with Pulp Fiction? Yeah. So like you know we we just we're gonna recap our recap our yeah. first recap era where we <laughs> talked about from the very beginning of Devil's Reign, Devil's Reign up until for Look Who's Talking Look Who's now. Talking Now, and you know we had a lovely conversation about that. You guys should go listen to that episode. Um, and you know we were all filled with excitement of what's to come. Yeah. Because we all agreed not to bring back a a topic we've hit over the head thousands and thousands of times, but the blowout moment. Yes. Where he did a great move in the 80s and it un- kind of derailed him. Unrightfully so derailed him and punished him for yeah. it. And we've we've talked about this many times to our audience how, you know, that was a good movie. He didn't deserve that. Um, but he he paid he paid it for his sins and then some. Yeah. And so Pulp Fiction. Yes. It's like it's it's when he finally like he has the cachet and he's coming back. Yeah. It's a comeback kid movie. It's a comeback kid movie. And it's yeah. especially a comeback kid moment in the sense that he hadn't really had a sin to atone for. Right. Like he was paying for something that he didn't owe. Right. 
He was paying a debt he didn't have due. Absolutely. And so Pulp Fiction's everyone kind of like, this guy is great, isn't he? Like we should, we should, it, this is on us for forgetting how good this guy is. Oh, I agree. This is on us. I agree, hundred percent. And so when you know Pulp Fiction comes out, massive success. Yeah. It wasn't. Oh, John Travolta's good. It's oh, remember that John Travolta was good. Yeah, remember John Travolta's great. Yeah, and that like there aren't a lot of movies that take an actor who was kind of in the dumps and catastrophically rise them to such an A-list level as Pulp Fiction did. And more of a reminding way. Yeah. Rather than see them genuinely fail and then come back and do a good role. I mean, and there there's probably examples of this, yeah. right? There have been, mean, been comebacks in Hollywood, big comebacks. Yeah. But, where but it's hard remind- to think of one that's that major. Yeah. Like, he goes from Look Who's Talking Now and Chains of Gold to Pulp Fiction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of anything that could be, like, remotely close to that, but... I mean, like Brendan Fraser's like on. He's on that right. He's now. on that. Rail. Not that we'll ever talk about that. Well, no, I mean we we've we told our audience this is a one and done podcast. Yeah. We're not going to do any more after this. Yeah. This is it. Yeah. So, wink, wink. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway. Um. So yeah, Pulp Fiction, huge success. Crash. Mm. It's like it, it 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 it's um it's Matt Damon's uh Goodwill Hunting. Like it's just. A-list superstar overnight. The the only thing is Matt Damon hadn't had hadn't like had any a career before. Right, right, right. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I just been like it's a sim- yeah similar situation. It, it's an overnight stellar yeah. star success. Mm-hmm. Pulp Fiction for him. Yes. Um, and then he he has the added benefit of having, you know, not like no sophomore curse, which is more of a director's term. Yeah. But like his second movie, Get Shorty. Oh, it's it's white man's burden. Well, we are, we don't talk about we don't that. talk about white man's burden. <laughs> that movie doesn't exist. That doesn't movie doesn't exist. But then it's get shorty. Yeah. So if you just you know erase that shit stain, um, if you forget about white man's burden, as we all should, um, then he really just comes out with two hot streak yeah. hits. I mean, it's a hot streak for a little bit after it's yeah. Pulp Fiction, Get Shorty, Broken Arrow, Phenomenon, Michael, She's So Lovely, Face Off. Mad City, Primary Colors, The Thin Red Line, A Civil Action. Like you're, you're probably skipping a few movies in between there. I'm though. not. No, I mean I skipped Welcome to Hollywood okay, and Our well, Friend Martin. Which okay, All, don't which yeah don't yeah, count. Yeah, let's um, uh, agree. We can skip those. But like, wow. n- the, all, not all those movies were hits. But but they were all respectable Travolta yeah, performances. All respectable. Agreed. Yes. Agreed. There was nothing like offensive in there. Right. Except for White Man's Burden. Which is not a, a movie. Yes, it does not exist. So, and and what's interesting when you started men- listing those is the waves and turns that the audiences are starting to see Travolta. Yeah. Because Pulp Fiction, Get Shorty, what was after Get Shorty? Um, right after Get Shorty was Broken Arrow. Okay, so that's really the turning point. So with Pulp Fiction and Get Shorty, it's more of like the gangster suave charismatic yeah, he's, cool he's, guy he's extremely charismatic he's yeah. cool he's funny yeah broken arrow action he's villain. a he's fun and he's a good bad guy yeah and he can fill in the gaps of yes. a script for a not as well written and then phenomenon's kind of like the <sighs> remember this this guy can act yeah i would say that's like i mean it, i've said this before it, and it's really hard to like kind of grasp this yeah. but like phenomenon's like tiptoeing the line of like art housey. It's a little Oscar Beatty. Yeah. Which is where I put it. Not quite love song for Bobby Long yeah. Oscar Beatty, but like it's about there. It's yeah. about there. Like almost kind of like this is like not A24, A24. Yeah. Well, Phenomenon's kind of like, you know, a Kevin Costner doing a, uh, what do you call it? Like a McFarland USA mm. or one of those like inspirational movies that you always see that's like, Maybe it makes a few dollars. It's probably yeah. it's pro it's successful. Yeah. Maybe they thought they'd get a few Oscars from it. They don't. But everyone's like, he's fine. It's a little pat. It's a little like uh, a little too much. Uh, what would you call it? A little too sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you put you put a little too- dreamsy. Yeah, it's feel dreamsy. Except feel dreams are really good. Um, but it, it it that started the it's trend forced, of like it's forced gumpy. Yeah. Except Forrest Gump somehow became a major success. Right. Um, but it, you know what I mean with but that? But still some good moments in the yeah. performance. Again, yes. not grotesque. Yeah. Like he's good in it. And then Phenomenon to 
Michael. Michael, which is the comedy shtick. Yeah. This is sort of the blend between I mean, it, fun-loving villain and cool, it, charismatic swap. Because he's, he's just like, he has to play an extremely charming angel, and he succeeds. Yeah. He is a very charming angel. Is the movie great? No. no. But did it hit all four quadrants and make a, it made a decent amount of money, right? I seem to remember that one making a good amount of money. Yeah. It, that, was like a, that was like a 90s four-quadrant hit. Let, me, let me double check. Yeah, I'm pretty sure like it was one of those movies where you watch where it's like, oh, really? It made that much money. Michael made 120 million, Off which of, is okay. Which is a what? What of his budget? I cannot find the budget. I, I, I mean, it wasn't. But it, it like it was a success. Yeah, yeah. People went and saw it. And also, Will Hurt, um, he bites into a lemon in it with the skin on. It's really unsettling. <laughs> it's maybe the most horrifying thing I've ever seen in a movie. <laughs> and I've seen some horrifying movies, folks. Believe you me. Yeah. Uh, okay, so then we go from that Michael, to Michael. Michael, she's so lovely. And that is, that's art house Yeah, acting. that's that's an, that's him taking a step back, taking like a third lead in a movie I thought was a rom-com, as we've talked about. Um, but he's, he's acting alongside with acting giants. Yeah, he's with, Robin, um, right. I was just about to say Ethan Hawke, but no, that is not <laughs> Sean Ethan Penn. Sean Penn. Uh, James Gandolfini, one of many. Hey, James Gandolfini's in that movie. <laughs> oh, Marone. James Gandolfini, uh, hey, one look, of five. Let me, let me go grab the pastrami. <laughs> the stromboli. <laughs> uh, he, it's one of like his five. He's in like five movies. Five Gandolfini. movies with Gandolfini, but like all of which a- acting giants yeah. in this. Um, mm-hmm. And who's that guy who was like Sean Penn's buddy in that movie? Oh, um, I know who you're talking about. Uh, he was in Repo Man, yeah, Lucky. Yeah, yeah. God, how am I forgetting his name? God damn it. He's a great... He's in... Oh, my God. He's such an a, earnest actor. This is embarrassing. It is embarrassing. Free. Harry Dean Stanton. Yeah, how, Harry Dean he's Stanton. He's an alien. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, acting alongside with Giants and holding his weight. Yes. Very well. That, I think... And all these movies we've just, like, kind of recapped are just, like... They're building on him. Even yeah. if they're not a box office success or a critical success, it's a build for him. Yes, yes, yeah. If anything, it's a good portfolio piece for his next yeah. work he could get. Until, what's after She's So Lovely? Face Off. Well, we get Face which Off. Which I think, it, which is one of his biggest successes. Yeah, box office-wise. Yeah, huge. it's putting him and Cage together. I think it has one of the best buildings ever, which is like Travolta slash Cage. Oh, yeah. Yeah! yeah. Oh, my Give it God. To me. And it could not have been in the most perfect time. Yeah. Because, like, again, both of whom are... They're back. They're I mean, on the rise. Cage was, hadn't been out yet, but... Right. But he's, like... He he kind of took the slow build, right, Cage? Yeah. Whereas Travolta, it's, like, skyrocket rise. Yeah. And sort of plateaued in that, like, A-list yeah. era. And then you got Cage sloping to that point. Mm. Perfect timing. Could not have been perfect. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. So, but, yeah, face off and then... Then he does Mad City and Primary Colors. Right. Which Mad City, like... He starts uh, making choices here. Yes. He starts making choices. He starts making choices. Yes. Which I really like Primary Colors. I do too. Uh, Mad City was... I liked it more than I didn't. I thought it was... Dustin Hoffman called it Mad Shitty as we talked very, about. Very middle ground for me. Like, yeah. And I think it was just because like it's... We've seen that movie before. Yeah, it's just an attempt to do Dog Day Afternoon, but yeah. in a modern context. Yeah, we've seen this movie before. Mm-hmm. So, but like, it's another one where it's just like, yeah, he's he was in a, a summer program. He's not the problem. Yeah, he he was just in a programmer movie that didn't work. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. fine. Uh, a, a lot of those come out of often. Year. A lot of these like hit or misses. I feel like until we get to the big miss, um, the big battle. Um, yeah. he's yeah. not really the problem. Yeah. Um, it's so after that he becomes a problem. He becomes a problem. So then we go from Mad City, Primary Colors. Primary Colors, great choice. Yeah, I love Primary Colors. He was great. Uh, uh, it's a Mike Nichols picture. He's playing yep. Bill Clinton. Yep. No, he's not playing Bill Clinton, but he's playing Bill he's Clinton. He's playing Bill Clinton. Oh, uh, yeah, it's me, John Travolta as Bill Clinton. We had to have a, at least one Bill Clinton impression uh, in this recap uh, yeah. episode. Impression? I don't know. You're talking about the former president sitting on the couch with us right uh, now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, former president Bill Clinton. Oh, glad to be back. Hi, oh, Stuart. Stuart. <laughs> All right, Bill, get out of here. No, he's good, leaving. Good callback on that pause yeah. there, Jeff. Yeah. Anyway. You like that? I like that. Um, so he goes from Primary Colors. Great movie. Um, he's in Welcome to Hollywood in a technicality. On a technicality, yeah. <laughs> 
along with that guy who keeps trying to be in the remember the guy in welcome to hollywood the which ho- one like the hotel uh oh manager, yeah the who one, ended up actually becoming yeah, an actor the one really good part of that movie the what the, yeah he the was the part of that movie that you and i were like the movie that you and i were like rolling our eyes at and dave was so mad that i made him cover it and then um like we get to that one part and we're like this guy's really funny <laughs> yeah yeah he is um and so yeah that's a technicality we're not really going to count yeah. that and then after that he's in the thin, red, thin line, red line which which is just you know it's a small role but it's a them it's a label movie yeah it's proving that he's in he's with all these other guys with all these other guys that yeah, terrence lab- malick thought to plug him into this yeah it's a it's role. a label film for sure mm-hmm. same with kind of austin powers in some respect yeah because like, it's a small bit but yeah, it's a label yeah. um so then thin red line a civil action a civil action uh you changed my mind about that movie. I did. I really like that. You movie. remember that? Uh, I. It's not in this room right now, but I would like to give a special shout out before we continue to mm-hmm. former guest Mark Tilly, yeah, who uh, yesterday gave me a VHS copy of a Civil Action oh, that he yeah, found in a yeah. store. Yeah, that's a movie I, I remember watching, and I remember the context because I I was like. I explained it in the episode. I was like either not sleeping well yeah. or I was really busy or something. And I just kind of half-assed watched it. Yeah. I watched like half of it one day, half of it the other. Yeah. And I just remember was not having like a great like mental yeah. thorough experience. But then as we talked about it, I remember walking away like, you know what? This movie is actually pretty this good. This movie's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Civil action. William H. Macy. Robert Duvall. Robert Duvall. <laughs> I mean, we've been, we've, we've, been, we've had a Robert Duvall Travolta experience yeah. of phenomenon. Yes. Um, when will we do the Duvall cast? Uh, two years Never. from now. <laughs> um, so, Civil Action, good movie. Did not do well, though. No, it did not. Uh, that that was starting the sinking. We're, we're in the air. I, Mad City didn't do well. Primary Colors did okay. This is um, like we're starting to turn the tide. Yeah, we're starting to, like, he's okay, but the movies aren't. Right. Um, after Civil Action, he's in Our Friend Martin for one scene. We're not really going to count it. That's a favor. Yeah. And then after our friend Martin, uh, he's in The General's Daughter, which... That's a really hard one to pin down. Yeah, it's kind of like the calm before the storm. It doesn't do well. well it doesn't do well, and the movie's not... Great? Great. It's not terrible. And he's not great, but he's not terrible. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this movie's just hard to pin down. Like, yeah. How he feel? It's got a great opening theme, though. Dun, 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 uh, hold on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Keep talking while I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pull this shit up. Je- come on, come on. Okay, sorry. We 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 all. <laughs> Stuart really check likes. this out. You picked like the part of the song that's not recognizable. There you go. Just with like military things happening and Travolta's walking around. Yeah. All right. Uh, boss asked. Fair use copyright. Fair use copyright. Um, uh, we used a section. Criticism. Yeah. So we used a section. Yeah. Um, yeah. Great bomb ass intro song. But the movie itself is like, very hard to pin down. Yeah. Very weird. And kind of troubling, cancelable. Yeah. In, some, in terms it's, of its subject matter. Yeah. It, it doesn't handle it with grace. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now. Imagine a general's daughter in the same year, same cast, but directed by Catherine Bigelow. Yeah. A director who could, you know, who had the... Who do, had done the, who's going to do the Hurt Locker later. Yeah. Uh, and beforehand had done something, right? Point Break. Yeah. A movie that's all about, like, rape culture in the military, but is like, what if this guy solved it? Well, what if it's not about, like, having justice for the woman who yeah. died? What is about John Travolta feeling better? right so it's it's a not a great movie it's problematic yeah um but it's not like it doesn't do anything for him one way or the other yeah. it, it's a programmer that doesn't that never one forgets about yeah so uh so general's daughter and then right after general's daughter he uh we covered his book propeller one-way night coach which he uh, what year did that book come out like 96 like, yeah so like it's a little bit out of it but it's just one of those things that's like he got he got a publishing deal He's he's at a level in his career where he can make I mean, get a publishing. Why don't deal. we just cut the bullshit and just say we were trying to fulfill in this an episode? <laughs> <laughs> why don't we just because then we did the orientation Scientology film? Yeah, again, so, which is what happened right after is the orientation, which we did as a lead into Battlefield Earth. Yes. Uh, did we ever rank the hair for that one? I can't remember. Battlefield Earth? No, the, the orientation of Scientology short film. I'm gonna say we did because I don't feel like doing it. 
I'm checking right now. Okay, great. Well, anyway, so in in retrospect, then we're not. If you don't really count those as part of his career, which you shouldn't, then it really just goes from General's daughter to Battlefield Earth. Yes. Straight out of terrible news, we did not rank his hair in orientation of Scientology short film. Oops, sorry. Do you want to put it at the bottom of the list just automatically? Sure. Fine. Okay, it's going in. Number f- new number fifty five orientation of Scientology short film. Why are you putting it at the bottom? I don't know. I just didn't feel like asking you where you wanted it. Okay, fine. Are you a- a taking over the hair ranking from now on? I guess. No, I'm not. You really disagree with my bolt hair ranking. I was furious. I'm so angry. It's, it's, it's nice for her. It's nice for her. Oh, great. Yeah. Compliment the animator, not Travolta's yeah. hairstylist. Well, let me find the animator. Okay. Anyway. So, Battlefield Earth. <sighs> we've talked a lot about this. We've talked a lot about Battlefield Earth. Both in the episode and in every episode following, we've talked a lot about Battlefield Earth. So, Battlefield Earth and Blowout share very interesting parallels. They're the yin and the yang to each other. Yes. Yes. The yin and the yang. They both have the same effect on his career, but in different ways, and both set up different comebacks. Because whereas Blowout was a movie that failed, but is a great movie, queuing him up for success later, Battlefield Earth fails and is a terrible movie with an and egregious performance. He's the problem. He's the problem. And not in more ways than just performance. Yeah. Because he's also like the spearhead. Yeah, he mind makes that it. movie happen. So that's the thing that I've talked about before, but it's good to recap on this recap episode is you know what we talked with Blowout, he has a great performance. What probably his best performance still. Yes, I opinion. would agree. Blowout's his best performance. Um great director, mm-hmm. great cinematographer, like just all elements of the movie just came out in the wrong time you know yeah came out in an optimistic reagan era when it should have come out in a pessimistic nixon era yeah battlefield earth he is everything that's wrong with this movie yeah everything else that's wrong you can somehow find travolta to be blamed for Mm -hmm. from the dumb laughs from the like every decision costuming every like decision artistically and it had his hands in it it's his movie yeah remember that part where he like as far as Whitaker thinks he got the one up on it, Charles like, yeah, I thought you thought you had gotten me, except I found it. It was the bomb. And he pulls like a frozen head out of a refrigerator <laughs> and starts laughing. <laughs> I am so proud you tried to one up me. <sighs> so, um, <laughs> I've gonna... seen some really bad movies, and that movie is just like yeah. so horrifically egregious like you just it's a crime against humanity it's a crime against humanity and and so like it was i i i i went through that era and i felt angry at him because now i don't know at this point in time we're gonna talk about the later movies but at this point in time i don't know how to feel about this guy yeah it's right like after Battlefield Earth. beforehand, because you can blame Blowout as a fluke, you mm-hmm. know, and you can blame all his bad movies. Yeah. Staying Alive, you can Eyes bl- of an Angel, you Chains can, of Gold. You can blame the public for all that. Yeah, you can blame the whole, the, just the bad d- decisions of the public yeah. that forced him into taking those movies. That's yeah. a problem. But he did this to himself. This feels, and he did this to himself, and every recovery choice is, a, is him making the choice. Yeah. And so, like, at this point, it's like, I, is all those good movies like that beautiful scenes he's had in Saturday Night Fever and Blowout and Pulp Fiction? Hell, even Perfect. I was yeah. even like, I liked that movie. Perfect. I really think I undervalued Perfect. I just want to say that. Yeah. I someone it on my Twitter feed the end credits for that popped up where like it's just all of the cast like dancing in a, a gym, and I was like, I think I was too harsh on Perfect. I think I actually, if I rewatch, I really like Perfect now. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 it, I, it stuck with me. Yeah, I remember we talked about it, and we're like, it's okay. Yeah, we're like, it's not perfect. It's <laughs> not perfect. Yeah, we thought we were so funny, but it stuck with me though, you yeah. know. And I really got to value that to the Jamie Lee Curtis Travolta chemistry. Yeah, it's you know, it, and it's a shame that we we've had a lot of one pairings with Travolta. Yeah, you know, we've had five Gandolfini Travoltas. <laughs> we've had five Gandolfinis. We've had. Uh, like three Duval Travoltas. Yeah. We've had two Macy Travoltas, but we've only had one JLC. One 
JLC Travolta and one Cage Travolta. Yeah. Something's wrong with that. Mm. Something, We've inexplicably had three Bruce Willis Travoltas, if you count both <laughs> as baby Mikey. So, oh. Oh, yeah. It's it's a travesty. Mm-hmm. It's a travesty. Um, but so yeah, going to Battlefield Earth, it's like I, I'm doubting everything that he's been yeah. doing. I'm doubting everything. Because right after Battlefield Earth, he does it's Lucky Numbers, which is not a reaction to Battlefield Earth because it's filmed before it came out. Yeah, but it's Lucky Numbers, which doesn't do anything for him. I like kind of like that movie because it's so bit heavy, and I like bits. Um, That's true. I fell asleep during that movie. Yeah. Um, Almost. I, um, I also. Wanna... I want to say. Did you know? Lucky numbers. And this is going to give points towards your uh, dislike of that movie. Yeah. Uh, I'm bringing it up right now. I believe Lucky Numbers is one of the only movies to have an F cinema score. Wow. Lucky Numbers cinema score. Because we did not talk about that hmm. during the um, uh, during the episode trying to find this right now okay cinema score which as you know is takes um uh like it's it's immediate reactions from the general public mm-hmm. cinema score is like those guys if you walk out they're like hey what did you think of the movie it's that so it's kind of it's supposed to be like the public's reaction to this movie mm-hmm. and you can almost directly equate cinema scores to box office yeah high cinema scores higher box office higher holds uh lucky has got an f it's one of the only like twenty movies to ever get an F. Hmm. Inexplicably, I don't know how. It's not a good. Why movie. Lucky Numbers was so scorned by the public, but it's not a good movie. Um. So anyway, yeah, we do Lucky Numbers, which isn't a reaction movie, and then Swordfish, which is maybe the best movie ever made. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I, Swordfish is another one I can't really pin my finger on, like put my finger on yeah. at all, because it's a very icky, icky movie, but it yeah. still glows. You yeah. know. Swordfish is radioactive. Is it a good movie? So, so, eh? Swordfish is it a great movie? S- Probably. Swordfish is 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 a radioactive piece of plutonium. Remember like, when if, we if, talked if, for if you one point get... five times the length of the movie about Swordfish? <laughs> if like if you are in a room with it and you see it glow, it may yeah. look beautiful, but on the back on the back side, you may not know this, it's but it's slowly cancer. killing you. It's giving you cancer. cancer. <laughs> That's what swordfish is. Yeah. It's like it's like, ooh, it's glowy and shiny, yeah, but then it's actually killing you. Yeah. It's that's exactly what swordfish is. Um great hair. Mm-hmm. Great hair. And and another one where I wouldn't say Travolt is the problem. He's good in swordfish. He's pretty good in it. He's great in that he part. He understood the assignment. He, that's he's great in that part where Hugh Jackman's driving the car and Travolt's like Take the wheel, and he stands up. And he starts firing <laughs> machine guns Uzi's out the into window. The RPG. Yeah, and they blow up half of downtown LA. There's no military response, and the next scene, they never talk about it again. What a with the bus in the <laughs> room. <laughs> the fucking bus. <laughs> People fall out and start exploding. <laughs> like, they start popping like balloons at a party. He has a clone of himself. Yeah. No one ever talks about that. That he has a doppelganger of himself. <laughs> that he has a, a freezer. <laughs> fucking hell so swordfish um it it's an attempted like but big budget movie is the matrix reaction yeah it's a matrix follow-up yeah um to try and get in like the hacker genre yeah um yeah. it's supposed to be like his and huge like kind of a comeback for him right after battlefield earth and it's like Hugh jackman's on the rise and it's a like a solidification of Hugh jackman doesn't do either of those things right Hugh jackman doesn't get a solidification for another year or two um and john travolta just comes out and people are like what, the, what is this guy doing? Yeah. Um, so then we get after Swordfish. Domestic disturbance. The $75 million budgeted uh, thriller set in one room with Vince Vaughn as Michael Myers. The That's the most confusing one. Yes. That is the most confusing movie to me. If it's that movie haven't made Buscemi's for the- Steve in that. He, oh, he is, That's right. <laughs> He's the one that gets killed. Yeah. Had that movie been made for the budget that it looks- success it might have been but because that movie could have been made for probably that, that's 15 million dollars travolta is also not the problem in that one either yeah but you know you, you know, actually he is the problem you know what that problem is his, his budget paycheck. his paycheck his paycheck <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's the issue travolta they presents him like 20 million dollars <laughs> yeah it's like that's but his performance wise i don't think he's, he's really, fine in that. He's, he's not fine. the problem and the first act of that movie pretty decent yeah, pretty solid sets up a good backstory and then, then Vince Vaughn just starts stabbing people. Yeah, and then it gets fucking yeah. weird. 
a barn blows up. Yeah. <laughs> There's a sword fight. Von yeah. gets <laughs> electrocuted to death. <laughs> Poor uh, guy from Swingers. Oh. <laughs> and wedding crashers. What if what if the uh, you know what that might have, would have made that movie ten percent better? What? No Steve Buscemi. His partner in the movie is John Favreau. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. John Favreau like walks in the scene with a Cubano sandwich. And he's like, You try my Cubano. <laughs> and then <laughs> And then Vince Vaughn's like, Oh, you try this and just stabs him in the chest. Yeah. Yeah. Oh Christ. Mm. Um and then after domestic disturbance. Austin Powers. And then that's a label movie. That's a label. He's literally in it for two shots. It's a label movie. Yeah. Great. I had fun talking about yeah, it. Yeah, that was a great episode. Great episode. You should Definitely listen to Austin Powers, yeah. but yeah, baby, yeah. Oh, behave! <laughs> I'm a shag tonight. Oh, Mr. Powers, oh. Mr. Powers. Oh, you do a really good e- Doctor Evil. Person. Who's who was I doing an impression of recently that we realize is Doctor Evil? Oh, 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 and the turn. Oh, and the turn blad. And the turn blad came down from that real quick, didn't I, Mr. Powers? <laughs> I forgot her. Tracy Turnblad. <laughs> Christopher Walken, you're special to me. <laughs> Timeless to me. Stop. You can't stop today as it comes speeding down the track, Mr. Powers. Yesterday is history. It's never coming back. Shut the fuck up. What are you doing? <laughs> What are you reading from? And you can't stop my knife and fork <laughs> when I see a Christmas ham, Mr. Powers. Okay. Scott. Moving on. Moving on. I want sharks with freaking laser Moving beams, man. on. Okay, he goes yeah. on from that, and he does basic. Uh, which is a basic movie. Yeah. This is... I will say, it's the movie The General's Daughter should have been. <laughs> but... <laughs> it's also, it's also not great in its own right. Well, the basic is basically General's daughter. Yeah, like in terms of like how like lukewarm it has confusing the, it is. Remember when it has like seven plot twists? Remember when it was supposed to be a Sam L. Jackson Travolta re team? Because yeah. this is the beginning of like the rebound era. Yeah. Because this is like, oh, you like Travolta and, and Sam, Sam Jackson. Jackson. Here yeah. they are again. But they're not together in that movie. Yeah, and, at, until the very end. And he's making bad choices at this point. He's yes, he picking is. movies that. He thinks are going to get him back because it's an action movie where me and Sam Jackson are together. But nope. it's not. Er, it's the most confusing script of all time that confounds audiences. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and th- this is like the beginning of his rebound era, which is all the bad decisions. But what's horrible about this era, Jeff, is like when he gets to the end of this era, it doesn't fix his decision making. Yeah. Because we're, uh, well, let's finish this first, but then yeah. and then we'll get to like after that. But so then after basic, the beginning the of the Punisher, re- um, the Punisher. Which is like basically face off, be, uh, uh, face off, uh, broken arrow sort yeah. of thing. That's sort uh, of what it's he's an attempt to cash in on the Marvel thing. That's the beginning of Marvel. Yeah, and that movie's more of a um, Travolta trying to hitch a ride with Marvel and things because in that episode we talk mostly about like the beginnings of Marvel Studios. Yeah, because that's what that movie is. Yeah. And it's kind of this weird intersection of different cultures in Hollywood, different times. Travolta's on his way out, Marvel's on its way in. Yeah. The death of the movie star era. Yes. That's interesting. Yeah. And after The Punisher, it's a love song for Bobby Long. Which I love that movie. You loved that movie. I love that it's movie. A bit of an awards baity thing. Yes, but he... Yeah, you, it still works for he, you. He understood the assignment to yeah. a T. And for a director who I had never heard of had basically like almost never made a movie after that yeah no who actually never made a movie after that yeah just it worked for shaney gavel uh it worked really well for me yeah it it, 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 you know i I found it really touching in a lot of moments seeing travolta and johansson on screen together um they had good chemistry they had great chemistry even like gabrielle gabriel mocked yeah even though the movie didn't do well had travolta kind of stuck with movies like that at this yes. period. Yes. Oh my God. If he did one more love song for Bobby Long, like, like movie. maybe it doesn't get him back to the A list, but it makes him like, yeah, Travolta, he's turning out good work every few years. Exactly. Instead of jumping into. Actually, no, the next movie's pretty good. What's it's that? your favorite movie ever. It's Ladder 49. I won't say it's my favorite. You keep joking about this. It's not like it's my favorite movie, nor is he. Put that fire out! <laughs> 
uh ladder 49 that's you know the mm. patriot the 49th part. installment <laughs> in the ladder franchise uh that that is the um um it's the patriotic firefighter movie yeah. and his character is I'll, I'll say it pretty paper thin yeah he's boring He's pretty boring in that. Like he's just playing the respectable sergeant. He's always like, hey, I'm the tough guy. Yeah. But, but he doesn't bring a lot of character presence to but it. But that movie on its own had its own assignment that it yeah. accomplished, which is like just be a patriotic firefighter, firefighter movie. movie. You know? yeah. and Martin O'Malley com- pops up at the end and gives and is like, Joaquin Phoenix is a hero. And everyone applauds. And yeah, then yeah. Joaquin goes off and become, start makes his rap movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. And la- which Ladder 49 doesn't do anything for him. No. And after that, it's Be Cool. Another rebound attempt to make a sequel. Yep. Get Shorty sequel. Yep. And Ten years later, doesn't work as well. Features a war crime in it, uh, which <laughs> we shan't talk about again. Um, it was a disturbance to yeah. behold. But it's it's a movie that um, is a very clear attempt to cash in on a lot of things. He's it's not even a, just be like Get Shorty. Yeah, he's just trying to do Pulp Fiction again because it's him and Uma Thurman. Yeah. And that's a, a travesty. Yeah, and it does not work. It does not work. It just alienates him even further, and people be like, oh, he's, this is embarrassing. He's cashing in. And that, I would say, is the end of his sub-category yeah, but... rebound era. Mm-hmm. Because then after that, we do... Mag- he tries to do other things. We have this documentary, The Walking on the Moon. Desolation. Which, again, probably a favorite of somebody. He has, like, one line in yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, Lonely Hearts. Yeah, it's the Lonely Hearts Wild Hogs Hairspray Bolt. Run. That's the that's road. To, that's the road to perdition. Public enemies cash in mm-hmm. on the period piece I, gangster movie. I gotta be very honest. I thought when you were saying road to perdition, you were talking about Travolta's on the road to perdition of his career. <laughs> no, um, but no. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, um, it's it's trying to cash in on that rebound, uh, that era where mm-hmm. and he's not getting the budgets he used to. Yeah, no, because uh, Lonely Hearts cheap movie. Yeah, and still didn't make. Yeah. A cheap movie, it didn't make any yeah. money still. And now that he's cheap, Disney scoops him up. Yeah. Disney's like, hey, we'll sign you for a three-picture deal. And uh, they sure signed him up for a three-picture deal. Because uh, right that's Wild Hogs. Wild Hogs. Um, Which is his biggest success in a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean that that's he's not the main star. It's an ensemble piece. Mm-hmm. Tim Allen is Yeah, the main character. He's the Tim Allen's the main character in that movie, not John mm-hmm. Travolta. But it, it's a movie that's good for Travolta. It's good for him, yeah. Yeah, it kind of like it gives him a little bit of footing. It yeah. it lowers the waters maybe like half a foot. Yeah. Like away from his neck. Lowers the waters and lowers the bar that he needs to rise up to. Yeah. Because now this movie is it's a lower. It's um, it's like class-y okay, movie. maybe I'll never be in a Pulp Fiction, or yeah. I will never be in. But he'll be a you know like he'll pop Sunny up Fever. in comedies. But you'll find me in some pretty good comedies. Yeah, and that's what. And Wild even though Hawks. that movie doesn't get great reviews and has some problematic elements, like it's a success for him. Yeah. Um, and then we get hairspray, hairspray, which big success, but. Also, kind of kills his career. <laughs> it's kind of yeah. the end of it. <laughs> yeah, uh, reliving his musical era, and yeah. I want to talk about Hairspray for a quick second. It's kind of an egoless movie for him. Like he's willing to jump in and just play like the role that's famous for being played by drag queens. Yeah, and he jumps right into it with like Gusto, and he brings a lot to that character. And he, you can tell he's having a good time. He's having a really good time in that movie. And that's something I want to touch on real quick. And we're back. <laughs> All right. Uh, Bill Clinton accidentally stumbled into the uh, the recorder on his way out there. I was going to try to make it seamless, bro. Yeah. Uh, uh, Just because, you know, I can do that. I can cut it. I know in. you can. But you didn't want me to. No, I wanted the inference that Bill Clinton actually yeah. turned our show off. Anyway, okay. So, so I was talking round. about Hairspray, yes. and I just wanted to quickly point out that I enjoyed, while that movie was kind of like, you know, eh, would I watch it again? Probably not. Yeah. But what I really liked about the movie was I watched almost like a son. Yeah. Kind of having a fun time before yeah, he's he having died. a good time. And it's like that. It's like that look of, yeah, stupidity kind of. Yeah. where he doesn't know what's ha- gonna happen. Yeah. and he's so like, and I'm back, and I'm back, and yeah. I'm back. It's the end of back. it's the end of Ed Wood yeah. when Johnny Depp is in the uh, the movie theater about to watch Plan Nine from Outer Space. He's like, "This is the one they'll remember me for." He's like, has the big smile on his face, and then the movie pauses and a possum is like, "Ed Wood died in poverty like fifty years later. like." Yeah. It's that. It's that exact moment. It's exact. Exactly. Yeah. That's a hundred percent exactly how it is. So, hairspray. Yeah. yeah. And it kills his career. People can't take Essentially, him seriously. Like, 
it hurts him because people can't take him seriously as a dramatic leading man anymore after that movie. Tragically, I think. Tragically, yeah. Because I think he's rather good in it. But other people, like, we talked about with your dad and everything like that. Like, people were just like, didn't you just play, like, a woman in that movie? Yeah. Wasn't, wasn't that the woman movie? Yeah, exactly. But and if Hairspray came out 10 years later, might have been different. Yeah. Might have been different. But uh, the culture is still a moderately, like, um, this is Bush era still. It's still Bush era. So people are like, guys playing a woman? That's embarrassing. Yeah. Uh, uh, then we get the last successful portion of his Disney yeah. career Bolt. and officially the end of this A-list, A-list era. Bolt. The officially, yes, but unofficially, we might, yeah, you might yeah, think yeah, old yeah, dogs yeah. are really the unofficial. Uh, um, Bolt. Bolt. Yeah, in which he voices a superhero dog and plays to his strengths a lot of his like aloofness. Bolt is going to be an episode you've listened to last week. Yes. And I said in the episode, but never finished it, where there was a thing about Bolt that I wanted to quickly talk about when it comes to Travolta's life. Yeah. Bolt is, is a movie where a dog grows up thinking he's a superhero and his entire purpose is about protecting the one he loves. Mm-hmm. And when he starts, when he gets out of this comfort zone, meaning the stage where he, his powers are, alive when he's outside of that zone and he's in an area where he no longer has his superpowers he has to find a new way to prove that he's a good dog to his owner so hear me out Mm -hmm. travolta grows up on the stage he starts acting when he's like fucking 18 man 17 and then he he has this massive climb to fame he's he's an actor he's a musical Mm -hmm. actor and then blowout happens, and then he loses his powers. And he's in the 80s, and he has no powers, and he's trying to figure out, how can the people love me again? How can the people love me again? And then he finds out, and then this one person, Quentin Tarantino, yeah. I'll say the name, says, no, 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 you do have superpowers. You're a and great actor. You're a great actor. And so he pulls him out of the depths, and he says, come with me, come with me. Mm-hmm. This is this is Mittens, yeah. who's like trying to, making him think he's actually a superhero dog he's giving him all these like moments of like no no no, you're really a superhero dog or like rhino maybe yeah and then he gets in a dog fight and it turns out he loses yeah which is a deleted scene in bolt yeah but in this era it's battlefield earth yeah where he gets in a tussle he doesn't win yeah it hurts him and he has to really look down the barrel of like okay well what's gonna work for me what's gonna work for me now and nothing works for him and that movie he finds it in real life he doesn't yeah i mean he finds something worse for him he makes money nowadays yeah he's he's still working yeah but he he i think he knows himself he's he doesn't have superpowers yeah. anymore yeah he's, he's not mr. he's mr incredible yeah i'm not strong enough yeah so that's those those yeah. are that that's that's the era yeah and moving forward after this it's gonna be uh it's gonna get a little rough Gonna get a little rough. I mean, we're kind of going into some movies that are very much my type of movie, <laughs> like shitty director video action movies, <laughs> where like it's clear John Rolls was on set for like a day. <laughs> He's the lead, um, but we're getting into that kind of zone. So I might be a little more excited than you about some of these movies, but I'm not gonna get I, excited in the sense of like this is a great movie. I am not excited. Yeah, I am not excited. Uh, tick tick, Gotti's coming. Uh, oh God, um, Gotti. But before we do our final, like, favorite movies from this era and whatnot, I do think we should talk about Charles's personal life at this time. Yeah. Going into next week, because another, like, cutting off point between these eras is that Charles suffers a severe personal tragedy in between Bolt and taking a Pelham 1, 2, 3. Yes. And it's, um, they're on, is on a Christmas vacation, he and his family, his son passed away, Jet yeah. Travolta, um, who suffered due to a seizure. Um, and it was a severe blow to his, to his life, to his family. Well, and like, it, it should be noted that like, you know, they were at their vacation home in the yeah. Bahamas and, uh, like he, his son Jet had a seizure. The, I think it was a maid who got mm. the Travolta's attention about it yeah. and said, Hey, like your son's having a seizure. And as I think the, like the articles I've read, who says like, you know, he did CPR on his son try to keep him alive and eventually then called it himself yeah and said like and then he just turned around and thanked the maid and yeah that was it tragic which is awful awful and uh you know the guy 
we we rag on him a lot, but he doesn't deserve terrible things like that. And like, yeah, no. as much as we do rag on him, like we do care about this guy, and it's terrible to learn about things like this that happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and on top of that, yeah, it, his troubles don't end there either. Mm-hmm. Uh, because one thing to know is he does continue to work pretty quickly after that. He doesn't really take time off. Yeah, he he buries himself in his work, in seemingly in a sense to cope. Yeah. But what's also dragging him down with that, as well as Kelly Preston, is a lawsuit that mm-hmm. they have in their hands. Um, yeah, this was a lawsuit brought forth, and I, I don't want—I don't know if you have an, an article about this in front of you yet, Jeff. But um, to my understanding, I read two articles about this a while ago, so yeah. my, I, I want to be careful about my facts. But it was um, Travolta and his family were getting blackmailed by some of the ambulance uh, yes. drivers or just the the paramedics who yeah. showed up because Travolta signed a waiver of transportation for his son's yeah. body, which for folks who, who don't know what that is, that's where it's like, you know, if you, if you have a loved one who's ill and you find them past, um, you can, you can still call 911 and be like, Hey, like I just found my, father or mother or whoever like dead and they'll send like a paramedic or they'll send like whoever to check on that first off they're dead they'll have a medical professional like Mm -hmm. call time of death and they can take their body in an ambulance to a hospital um for like a a either more efficient way of telling or if anything just to you know take them to the morgue but he he signed that document and the ambulance drivers took it and tried to blackmail him for $25 million saying they would leak it to the press if he didn't pay. And you may be asking, like, why is that blackmail? Well, I believe the the logic behind that was, like, they were saying we can show the public this document that you signed this waiver of transportation yeah. to show that you were somewhat at fault for your yeah. son's death. Yeah. That was the rationale. Fucking terrible. Which is awful. Fucking terrible. And the reason I bring this up in addition to just kind of charting Travolta's life is that it does affect his career right after. In the sense that, like I said, he buries himself in his work right after this. Right. Because in the next year alone, it's Taken of Pelham, Old Dogs, From Paris with Love, back to back to back to back. And Taken of Pelham and Old Dogs were filmed before this incident. Yes. Right? I believe so. Because... Yeah. Um, yeah, they were, they were both filmed before this incident. Because the Old Dogs, uh, we will talk about this eventually, but Old Dogs was delayed on numerous occasions, but one of those was because of Trivol- the passing of Travolta's son, mm. Jet. Uh, Taken a Pelham 1, 2, 3 had sa- similar uh, problems with that, where they had already filmed it, but they delayed the release of that because of uh, Jet's passing. Yeah. but I, So I think the movie he filmed after that incident was... From Paris with Love. Yeah, From Paris with Love and Savages are pretty much back to back after that. Yeah. Not very far off after that either. Like, again, bury himself in his work. It was like less yeah. than a year after yeah. that. Crazy. Mm-hmm. So it's important to talk about this. Yeah, it though. was important to talk about this because that it does provide some context for the movie's upcoming. Yeah. Because he does do some movies, you know, where he's dealing with grief coming from this point on. And it won't be the last one yes. time either. He, he's yeah. suffered a lot. Yes, since then. So tragically, yeah. Okay, but, yeah. So now that we've we've talked about that, um, do we want to do before we wrap up? Uh, do we want to pick our favorite movie from this era, or least favorite movie from this era, and our most underrated movie from this era? Okay, so um, Jeff, I can go first on favorite, and then when, while yeah. as you give your favorite, I'm gonna look for my least and underrated. Yeah. But in terms of my favorite, I got to go with a love song for Bobby Long. That's impressive. Um, I just think that. He did everything he was mm-hmm. supposed to do. Joe Hans did everything she was supposed to do. All the cast did everything they were supposed to do. The cinematography. Like, that movie delivered its purpose. Mm-hmm. So, and it moved me emotionally. So, yeah, I, I, that's my favorite. Yeah. Um, is it too cliche to say Pulp Fiction? No, <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't think so. I think Pulp Fiction was, the, it was just a great movie. And it was the best, you know, we'd seen from him in a while. Yeah. And, I mean, I really enjoy Get Shorty. Uh, I mean, I love a lot of these movies, Broken, Broken Arrow, Face Off, Primary Colors. The Thin Red Line is probably cl- like teeing the line with Pulp Fiction. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, I'll probably just give it to Pulp Fiction for my favorite. Yeah. yeah. Uh, least favorite, I think the, we're going to have yeah, the same Battlefield thing. Earth. Battlefield Earth. That was a war crime. Yeah. Uh, most underrated? Yeah. 
Is yours just gonna be a love song for Bobby Long again? No. It's kind of underrated. Well, yeah, but I don't. I, yeah. I could easily take that out. Yeah. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna say it's a civil action. Ooh, I think a civil action. Well, you know, a civil action. IMDb. It's got a six point six. And let me double check. But on um, Rotten Tomatoes, a civil action has sixty two percent. So it's fresh, but on the edge of fresh. Yeah. Um, which is probably what I would give it. So maybe it's not underrated. Maybe it's rightfully so mm-hmm. rated. But eh, I don't know. I don't know. If I were to go underrated, um, I think I'd have to go with Swordfish. <laughs> I think Swordfish is a crazy movie. I got a lot. It's just batshit crazy. Yeah, that movie deserves a reevaluation. As Would I watch it again? Yes. Maybe. Would I watch it again every day of the week? Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, I think. Yeah, uh, I think we about. I think we about covered about, it. All. About wraps her up. So. Yeah, join us next week for episode one of Era 3. Yes. What, are we, what are we calling that? Um, the Travolta Exploitation Era. And why are we calling it that? Because uh, it's exploitation films, but with John Travolta. People are exploiting John Travolta, and he is exploiting himself. Great. Which we'll talk about. Lovely. But yeah, join us next week for our episode on the taking of Pelham 123, or 123. I don't know exactly. I think it's 123. 123. Yeah. Uh, with special guest Cole Bradley. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a good one. So make sure you folks tune in and it will be a good time. It's been a good ride we've had so yes. far, Jeff. And we're going to stick it through. Going to uh, stick it through. As a reminder, we are available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and YouTube. And as just a reminder, we are staying on Spotify. Um, <laughs> 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 Look, the, w- our show does not have a, a huge listenership right now. Uh, I feel like if we got rid of our spotify it would we just be like canceling the show essentially yeah we kind of would be yeah um i would like to say joe rogan has an open invitation to come and uh fight me <laughs> you probably win but he has an open invitation to do so oh, cool. uh but we are staying on spotify um have a podcast google podcast and youtube please remember to rate review subscribe or whatever platform you're listening on um you can find us at travolting pod on twitter or instagram travolting podcast at gmail.com uh, if you want to email us any comments or questions, our Reddit, r slash revolting, it's there. Find me on Twitter at Jeff W. Sweeney. Find me on Instagram at Stuart on 185. Um, it's always special thanks to Rebecca Johnson for her graphic design and Michael Van Bodegum Smith for our theme music, which you might have a new say.